I'm Lisa Young and I'm a singer from Melbourne, Australia. My background is in world music and jazz and improvisation. Since 1994, I've been studying kunukul, which is uh, the reciting of solkatu, and the solkatu sounds are the vocalised rhythmic syllables of South Indian music. It's the most beautiful art form of vocal percussion, and I first began studying it in Melbourne with Ravi Ravichandra, and then I've had many trips uh, to my guru in India, Karagudimani, he's in Chennai. It's the most exquisite art form, which in some ways uh, onomatopoeically relates to the Mridangam drum, but it is actually grown as a language much more than that, and it, it has grown over many, many, many hundreds of years. Kunukul is an art form of principal study, and so it's recognised as something that someone would pursue for their life as part of the percussion section. So as a jazz and improvising singer, it has uh, integrated beautifully into my sound bank scat language. <laughs> Maybe what is most specific about the way I use kunukul is that I use it in a melodic sense as well as in an intoned sense. So I use it as a, the expression of a melody or as a bass riff like din din tang tak din tangarin din tang tak din tangarin like that, like a pitched way of using it. This quartet is Steve Magnuson on guitar, Dave Beck on drums and Ben Robertson on double bass. So we've had quite a long collaborative history and we've explored many uh, pieces with South Indian influences prior to this new piece, The Eternal Pulse. These musicians are incredible players. They all have the deepest sense of time and groove and they're chosen particularly for their interpretive performance aesthetic because quite a bit of the music is improvised and so the piece has been written with them in mind specifically for them, knowing what they will bring to the work. I'm Ben Robertson and this is my instrument, the double bass, and I've had a fantastic time collaborating with Lisa Young in the project The Eternal Pulse. When I think about um, internal pulse and how it relates to the music, there's two aspects. One is intellectual, is a way of thinking about how you intellectually divide the beat. And the other part is how it feels in your body. And I suppose that's the part that I would my, most like to get to when I play, not the part that I understand intellectually. Because I feel that um, one can get closer to the intention in the music once one feels the subdivisions and the rhythms rather than intellectualises them. My name's Stephen Magnuson. I am a jazz guitarist from Melbourne. I've known Ben since 1987. And it would have been about six years ago they called me up and said, would you like to be involved in this band? And of course I jumped at the opportunity to be to play with these wonderful musicians to kind of look at new ways of approaching improvisation through rhythmic structures that Lisa and Ben had been looking at with their Indian influences, with kind of the Western harmonic thing as well. The other thing that makes it really special is because we're doing challenging music, but it's with my friends, you know. I've known Steve for a long time and he's you know, one of the greatest guitarists in the world as far as I'm concerned and there's a depth of relationship with him 
that comes out in the music when I play with him and I've known Ben for as long as I've been involved in music and it's the same. Well, Lisa's a great singer to play with as a drummer. I love it how she's she's tuned into the drums and the rhythm and that's great for me because that's my department. So, you know, that I love that. As well as the warmth, there's a toughness about it which I like. You know? It's that combination of the depth of relationship with the um, exploring of the music that makes it very interesting for me. And that's what it's about for me. If you don't have a depth of relationship, you can't have a depth of music. So we were looking to create structures which would create these opportunities to speak to each other. So not always uh, in the melody sections or in the set sections, but where the piece would expand. You're trying as a composer to give space to everybody's unique voice in the quartet so that they can express themselves but of course interrelate to each other. As you write music for improvisers, you inbuild into the music the idea that it will change. It's almost an essential part of the way you write it. And I think Lisa and I both had that in mind of not just thinking about a written piece as being a set piece, but being a vehicle for improvisation. <laughs> Well, one of the things that I always look forward to at every rehearsal is Lisa's chai and also at the gigs as well because she brings it along in a little thermos. I try to make it myself but it doesn't come close. I even have on my phone a little instructional video from Lisa on how to make chai but I, I can never get it right. The intent of this most recent work, The Eternal Pulse, was to compose a song cycle for my quartet that fully integrated kunukul as part of my language and as melodies and to uh, e express and explore a sense of eternal and internal pulse. So eternal pulse could be seen as uh, the ongoing metre in any given piece and I knew that I would explore many different uh, metres but the internal pulse is the way those metres are subdivided internally. <laughs> I guess all sounds and syllables do represent um, some sense of feeling and I guess that's what I've tried to do in this piece is embed the kunukul language into my own sound bank language or scat language. <laughs> I absolutely love the sound of kunukul. It really speaks and resonates with me. I guess because I love percussion, but I love the way uh, in my own art form I've used it as to pitch melodies and as well as just using it as an intoned, um, more percussive sound. Of course, I sing... So I put the phrases into melodies and bass riffs and I really, for me, that resonates and works. I feel like there's lots of different pulses going on all the time. Um, there might be a slow pulse and then an implied double time pulse over that and then another pulse implied by another member of the ensemble and there's all sorts of different pulses or polyrhythms happening at various times. But the overall feeling is that um, all the pulses uh, interact and join up at different points within the music. I think the word internal pulse sort of something that we all kind of have within us. I mean, we have a heartbeat, 
so there is a there's always a pulse and time is you know we live in time we have we live in you know time is something that kind of exists in our consciousness and you know our universe so we we're always dealing with pulse to some extent the music that we all play the four of us in in this ensemble and many all the other ensembles i think we is pulse generated it's almost like when we uh play together we we have a like a secret communication which is the language of the music it's like you're opening your senses when you play the whole time to find each other actually that for me that's it's a great feeling in a performance when you find each other and you feel this um, crossover kind of of language and energy going on. I think I've always really loved the sense, a deep sense of rhythm. I spent most of my childhood um, as a dancer and so I really believe that that sense of embodying rhythm and feeling rhythm is where it's at. Um, and, and possibly what happens then from a, a dance or a rhythmic background is that you get good at uh, feeling and hearing more than one rhythm at a time. So you get quite good at one pulse going along and you're feeling another one at the same time. So maybe for me it's actually, it's not ever really been a hard thing to clap and, or to play something like that at the same time as singing. But um, possibly I've worked on it for a long time too, so. So you don't think it's a freakish talent? It's not a freakish talent, no, it's not freakish, but because for me it's actually fairly natural and I, I do love, I love this sense in the, in the South Indian tradition of being the time with your hand and the different structures that you do to do that. It, it sort of matches my brain. <laughs> Do the